Hello and welcome to a new weekly show reviewing the Indian Super League which began 2 weeks ago and has had many events since it has never failed to disappoint and I'm joined again by Devidhi Bhattacharya um I guess we we can't really move on to what happened the past week without talking about um the big fight between Juan Fernando and Gerard Nuss in the dugout Absolutely I mean that is something that you won't want to see uh, as a as a football fan at the same time I think nobody uh, you know Uh, wants to avoid that kind of a fight because without the fans the game kind of has lacked a little bit of passion but it's very good to see that the passion between the two manager uh, you know has uh, hit that kind of heights but there's a line that a professional manager shouldn't be crossing and i think the way juan fernando has been mocking uh, after the, after the push on gerard nus is just something that sends a wrong message i think there's nothing short of entertainment the past week we've had games that have turned into a bit of a football match at times with a bit of a, a tactical aspect to things and a bit of football expertise required to analyze those moments but in the overall scheme of things the entertainment has never been short and i think that's one thing you get for a given with indian football and specifically the indian super league there's always entertainment is it be it the referees be it the managers be it the players be it the fans it's always entertaining um and i think that's something that goes under the radar in the indian super league um people tend to think it to be a very minor league that doesn't really produce the same level of hysteria that the european leagues provide but i mean rest assured you know the indian super league is up there with the best that's why you have so many eyeballs on it absolutely i mean there's, there's such a such an ignorance about the indian leagues uh, because i mean fans in india are so much uh, spoiled with the premier leagues and the champions leagues and the la ligas that they somehow can't appreciate the quality that the indian players and the foreign players playing in the indian leagues uh, they kind of have and i think uh, something like that has been really uh, showed by the northeast team and how they have performed in uh, in the first two games because uh any anybody looking at the team sheet would have written them off from the league but they have they've kind of stamped their presence with their kind of performance uh what do you think how they have performed yeah i was just going to say let's talk about northeast because that seems to be a very good uh team to talk about uh, at the start of this uh, review show um the surprise story so far uh, definitely by country mile and under the uh, managerial expertise of their um i think it's fair to say is a very inspirational character uh, gerard nos um, of course a disciple of rafa benitez in his earlier days and he's still young you know he's still in his 30s he still has a long way to go in his managerial career but from what i've seen from him he just wants me to want to like him i mean such a likable character he comes on the interviews after the game and uh, i mean goes on an f bomb and stuff i mean this is fantastic you you've never seen characters like this in indian football i'd say and um uh, to see so much raw emotion from both the players and the manager is quite quite a unique thing. Yeah and and I think that's something that a lot of teams have been lacking on because a lot of teams uh, the big names especially the Mumbai's and the ATK's they've been relying on the foreign signings they've had you've seen the kind of uh, you know impact Hugo Bumo and uh, Jahu have had uh, how much Roy Krishna has had an influence in the game uh, whereas for Northeast I think he's got the best out of his Indian players they look like a team that that has cohesion in them and all of the players are kind of implementing and executing the plans equally and I think that's that's what makes them uh, such a dangerous team because they don't look to sit back they look to uh, you know sell, go on the front foot try and press the teams which is which is fantastic fantastic to see for a team uh, that you know people wouldn't consider to be a to be competing with the with the big teams I think the intensity was there I think the intensity is what we love uh, about Northeast United I think they're very aware of the deficiencies they have in their squad um if you stack them up on paper against I think 9 of the 11 teams that I said you'd say that on paper they lack in terms of just sheer quality of the foreign signings and the Indians but raising the game to that level you know I think intensity is the word to use and um I think the intensity kind of overshadowed or overruled the referee in many circumstances in the game against uh, FC Goa um there were a few instances where uh, players were reckless in challenges and got away with it um but what do you have to say about referees not having control of these games we've seen maybe the first week was a bit of a dull affair where teams were trying to figure each other out but now that the shackles are almost off um i think the referees are being exposed the referees kind of uh, are kind of having it easy without the crowd to officiate games but i think 
now I think the players are kind of trying to impose their personality on the referees. They're trying to influence decisions. They're trying to, uh, you know, get their get their say into their head. They're trying to get into the head of the referees because uh, the Indian referees don't have a history of being great uh, officials on the pitch. And even the foreign referees that have come to the ISL, they're kind of finding it really hard because players without the crowd, they're really raising their voice putting their personality on the pitch which is making it difficult because not only challenge is it is it is it the challenging of authority that really brings the referees to a ground level rather than retaining any control of the game i think yes i think even even all of us in our playing days have have kind of taken advantage of a referee that hasn't been the most imposing himself and who hasn't punished uh, reckless challenges straight away we any any reckless challenges that has gone away uh, without being punished has you know, has has brought on more reckless challenges and more uh, controversies in the on on the pitch. Players speaking to the referees, you know, ha- manhandling the referees in the derby. I think uh, uh, Pritam Kotal had kind of the manhandled the referee a few times, and I think the commentator just said that. I mean, how many more times is he going to do it before he gets booked? Uh, so I think that's been pretty consistent this season, and I think that's something that's going to keep happening. But it's also a question of bad behavior going unpunished because we've seen Edu Bedia um, particularly showing um, complete disregard for referee's authority on the pitch um, with his antics, you know, not just diving um, when there's minimal contact, but also just as a captain of your club, you can't be going out and representing yourself in the worst possible manner. And uh, with referees not having this much of a basic control over the game, I, I think it's just going a bit... Um, astray in terms of where referees are heading and where the standards are heading because now we're looking at how these incidents kind of affect decisions um, later in the game and we've seen a few blunders being made over the past week or so and I do feel that it is because the referees aren't safe they're not feeling as if their calls are going to be backed by everyone around them and it's almost going to be challenged no matter what the call is that is kind of making them very un- insecure about their decision. So I hope there's a bit of a, a bit of an improvement on that front. I hope the Federation as well as the, uh, I don't know if there's a referee body, but they come together and kind of, you know, award some strict punishments for any players who breach a certain code of conduct because it is getting ridiculous now. And um, another thing I want to mention is the the state of some of the tackles and the challenges that have engulfed the last week. Um, we did see Redeem Telang's um, straight red card challenge. I mean, that was a shocker. Straight in the middle of the knee, studs up. And we did see a couple of the similar kind of challenges, get, uh, players getting away with it. So, um, is there something to be put in place to kind of penalise such reckless actions? I think Redeem Lang has been uh, punished uh, retrospectively uh, for his challenge. One more uh, match ban for him. But I think it, the onus falls in the referee on the standard of uh, aggression that he wants to see on the pitch. I think the moment he puts out a pulls out a yellow card or he books a player for a challenge that he seems is unfit for the match, I think the game just falls into. I mean, players are going to start you know falling into place that way because the moment you the players realize okay this is the limit that I can go to because they don't want to get sent off. If you get sent off, you're letting your team down. That's not the referee's fault. It's the player's fault. I think it, the onus right now is on the referees to put the standards in place. i tell you what, I mean, if... I mean, we're talking about hypotheticals here, but the main question is, if Indian Super League had VAR, would it be better or worse? And I, in my personal opinion, it would be worse. What do you think? Absolutely. I think the VAR hasn't done anything to make football better. I think people are... I mean, you see, now players are very public about how... Uh, dissatisfying the experience of a VAR is. Uh, and even with the facilities in Stockley Park, if the situation is like that, in India, it's going to be even worse. So there's no yeah, reason. I can only imagine the video assistant sitting on a beach in Goa, just pressing the wrong button. <laughs> but uh, less said about it, the better. Um, I think there are big, big improvements required to get referees to a decent standard in Asian football. Forget world football, you know. We're not even comparing them with the best of the best. Um, slightly shifting our focus back to the football then and Northeast, we've mentioned them a couple of times. Just looking through what they've done this past week, you know, they they held on to a draw against FC Goa, which was a fantastic result. And they also managed to come back from behind against Kerala Blasters, uh, a game that it kind of changed um, depending on the swing of things. There were five, five minute spells of momentum from Northeast United, while Kerala Blasters kind of sat back and expected things to happen by default, really. They didn't really press on after 2-0 and let Northeast back into the gap, uh, if, if I may say so. So, 
Is that a question of character or is it actually quality shining through in, in terms of Gallego and Apaya? I think that's quality and the fact that the manager is very cunning in his uh, in his tactics because he knows uh, or I, I think he I think he knows the way Kivu is going to set his team up and Kerala is going to if you keep running behind the ball ba- behind Kerala you're just going to tire yourself and that's that's playing into Kerala's hands so I think once they figured out the fact that you know if if they use this intensity in in uh, in periods of time in in five minute phases uh, and I think that's that's how the how they can get the best out of their team and their quality that they have and that kind of helped them get back in the game because Kivu is really struggling to create. If you're if the opposition team's not making a mistake, I don't think I don't see Kerala really creating uh, a lot of chances even with the high possession they have. They use the whole length of the pitch from the side backs on the flanks to uh, to the forwards which is not really helping them right now so possession for possession sake as we would, as we know is completely useless yeah i think that's the thing northeast was just clinical a bit more clinical than kerala was because kerala did go 2 nil up rather fortuitously and they just took their foot off the pedal so um coming back on to kerala now and uh, you just mentioned that kibo vikuna the manager is kind of baffled with the way that they're trying to play out from the back and they're getting that first phase right but they're just not progressing from that initial point um you, of course he did he managed Mohan Bagan last season and to the I-League title. But do you see any similarities or differences between the players that he has at his disposal? Because I think the major deficiency is in the midfield and the wings, don't you think? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, I think he's got it right uh, with his back four and his keeper. I think they're doing it. I think they're playing the ball till the midfield uh, just the way he wants to. Uh, but that's where the difference is uh, when compared to his team uh, in Mohan Bagan. Because he had uh, Jose Betia who was very good into playing a pass and moving into space. It's what he's what he emphasizes, Kivu, is playing in these half spaces in the in between the lines so that he can break the midfield press, which I think Kerala have been failing to do. And the one person they were gonna look to uh look to be able to do this with is Sahal and he's completely out of the picture with the last two games. So I think that's where he's struggling and obviously uh, his front line isn't the same or is not firing on all cylinders as the manager would like. So I think uh, he's got his work cut out for him and he knows uh, wh- where Kerala lacks right now. Yeah, I think for Kerala, it's a matter of getting things right further up the pitch. I think in the back, you just mentioned the back five with Alpino Gomes at the back. I mean, it's a major, major upgrade on the keepers they've had before. And with Nishu Kumar at right wing back and uh, or, or right back and Jessel a left back with the two foreign centre backs. I think they're just solid at the back. They just need to kind of build upon that. And I also do think that Kerala are actually playing better without the fans because, yes, there is that pressure of social media and the fact that Kerala fans are the most vocal on social media, but also just not being in that pressure zone of um, the Nehru Stadium in Kochi is kind of helping them kind of blend into that new style that Kibo wants to portray. What do you think? Yeah, I think, uh, but again, we have to see what happens when the fans come back. I think that's that's something that we can't possibly predict because uh, in that time period till the fans come back, maybe the team becomes better. Maybe the team gels uh, uh, much, much uh, better than uh, what we see now. The players understand what the manager is trying to, uh, trying to really ask, ask from them. So, but again, I think he needs his Indian Indian players to step up. And I, in the whole ISL, I think uh, the Indian players have really not uh, shown as much as uh, we would want them to. It's been the foreigners who, who stolen the limelight. So, Robbie Fowler gave a big, big uh, comment um, yesterday about how Indian players look that they haven't been coached before. And this is quite a shocking comment because for many, it seems like Indian football was on the upward path. Indian players were destined for greatness in 10 years. And I'm I'm not going to go to the extent which FSDL tries to brand it as an Indian playing in the Premier League in 10 years. But there was a very, very good case for positive momentum being built. But now Robbie's Fowler's comments have kind of brought that back to a reality checkpoint. And uh, where do you stand on this? And do you think it's, it's more to do with the fact that he has a lot of players that are probably at the end of their careers in India? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe so. But I think uh, for Robbie, it's been a cultural shock. I think he didn't understand what he's walking into. Uh, because he's a player who's played in the 
in the highest levels of football and i think he sort of expected a certain uh, you know not a drop of not this level uh, because in terms of the coaches that have worked in india or the coaches that have uh, that india has i think there is a gulf in quality and i think that's what he's seen uh, even if you uh, kind of credit the fact or you know put put it on the shoulders of the fact that his indian bunch of players are kind of past the prime so uh, that is something that he's suffering from but at the same time you you know that these these players uh, the nara and das the jj they have played the played with stephen constantine they've performed for the national team so you can't discount them as players who haven't been coached but i think the tactical awareness that he demands from them uh is what he's suffering from or what the players aren't getting very used to uh because uh what do you think the difference between his foreign signings in pilkington and magoma who have really you know tried to play intricate football how how different have the indian counterparts been the indians have been way off the pace i was just going from the two games that they've played so far and i must say i don't even think east bengal know what they're getting into with the isl because i think they kind of underestimated the competition with no preseason almost for them it's it's a bit of an uphill struggle for them and when you have indians that are probably at the end of their careers you expect them to kind of hit the ground running um, compared to the other teams because they kind of had have a bit more experience about them but on the basis of that you know when you have top class players like steinman like pilkington like maghoma you've got to kind of raise your level to that that level that is being set by the coach by the by the foreign signings and it's just not there that gulf is too big for east bengal in my opinion but um i think for east bengal it's a difficult one because they themselves don't ex- don't know what to expect the season um if there's one thing they should be happy there's no relegation because at least that threat isn't there but apart from that i mean it's only fan pressure isn't it that really has to kind of motivate these players to do well because otherwise i don't see it going smoothly for them absolutely and the fan pressure uh, coming from a club in in calcutta i think is is just uh, it's a natural thing because you you can't it's, it's something that they have to live with but in terms of the fact that uh, in coming back to the players again i and i think uh, robbie fowler has brought a set piece coach with him uh, which is some which is a first in india i'd, I'd assume um, because i'm not i'm not really sure i'm pretty sure carlos squadrat is the first set piece coach I'm not title is set piece coach but he's definitely the best set piece coach in the world no no but he's got a coach who specifically uh just a coach for set pieces not not somebody who's very good at creating set pieces and carlos is very good at i, I don't see a difference between him and carlos squadrat to be honest <laughs> but that's something i think uh, indian players are taking time to uh, you know somehow get used to because i think they tried something uh, from a free kick from a long free they tried to pull it wide uh, get a better angle at it and they, they just made a mess of it so they're really not buying into the philosophy that robbie's trying to uh, play with and that's why they're suffering because the players you can't say jj is the hasn't got the quality you can't say uh, players that he has uh, have been played in the best in the highest level but they're not performing up to the potential that they can i mean yesterday's game against um, mumbai city um once danny fox went off with that injury i mean east bengal were just absolutely ripped apart one day i think it was it was almost a given that once they lost the ball higher up the pitch when they were pressing for an equalizer or even the second goal they were just going to be opened apart and it just looked like they were completely out of depth absolutely and that i think that credit to mumbai for the kind of quality they have if you you're playing uh, a a jahu like uh, personality in the middle of the uh, middle of the pitch there's there's no way near that anyone uh, can get to in the east bengal team at this point in time so i think credit to mumbai because how demanding they were for of for the ball to be with them and uh, to be uh, the kind of team who's going to create constantly and i think they were they were just met with a team that's east bengal was just met with a team that's that's much more uh that's that's much better, better than them at this point in time yeah i think that that i think we hope to see east bengal kind of getting up to speed soon enough i think with more games but there are only so many games that you can kind of bet yourself in it as tournament so big questions there uh, robbie follow himself is asking questions so i think uh, when you have a lot of questions and no answers there's a lot of homework to do uh but moving on to another club that seems to have a lot more questions than answers at the moment and bengaluru fc and uh before i go on on what i think is happening at the club uh, what do you think of their early form so far i think again this is this is a team that uh on paper looks a team 
that's going to perform week in week out but uh, they haven't really got uh, they haven't uh, uh, got going with the kind of uh, team that they have and i think a big let down this season has been uh, sunil chetri because you would expect the talisman of indian football to uh, you know come up with the goods uh, every now and then and people look to him for inspiration and he's been out of sorts and which has been personally which has been a let down for uh, for uh, bfc but uh, you were very excited with the two foreign uh, frontline players in the upsets in uh, silva and uh, they even they have struggled uh, and uh, carlos is trying out a new formation he's not creating much uh, they would suresh and uh, dimas in midfield uh, so, so where do you see them improving and how do you see them improving Well, first of all, who doesn't get excited about a couple of foreign signings, especially signings who've done well abroad? You you can't help but get excited. But I mean, apart from apart from a few plays that Clayton Silva and Sunil Chet, I mean Sunil Chet has been absolutely absent. Like there's no way to put it. He just looks completely off the off the pace of the game. Uh, looks like he's kind of finding his rhythm um, into the team, and that's a big blow because BFC has relied on him for three seasons now in a row. uh while miku wasn't playing it was always chetri and it seems to be like carlos just can't coach um i don't know what it is about him whether it's just his uh, inexperience as a manager or whether he just can't get together a side that can control the game and play because they have ball players that's the, that's the most confusing thing for me uh when i look at that team and i see suresh eric patelu dimas delgado and you have a front four who are all very good players uh when you try and play intricate play kind of break down the opposition defense and then you see fran gonzales and juana launching balls to offset to kind of play him as a target man i i'm just bemused because i don't understand this under albert roca two seasons ago um they were playing such beautiful football they were kind of keeping the ball um bring their opponents to come press them and then they just beat them with um very good football but now it's just almost like they have no ideas and um it's it's a bit depressing to be honest because when you see players that have performed for two three se- uh, seasons year in year out um that drop off is just not acceptable but i also do think that bfc haven't really grown with the power curve and by this i mean the likes of mumbai city uh, atk mohan bagan fc goa have constantly added to their teams um, in terms of indian talent and i don't think bfc have done the same but uh, but would you say that uh, they're trying to play a f- uh, brand of football that's that's intricate and that's compli- uh, complicated but for them right now i think the message should be to simplify things better just simplify the way they kind of they're they're playing football i think it's simple as it is isn't it at the moment it's like launch the ball um to the front line because i think at this at one point of the fc goa bfc game there were six men on the fc goa defense and they were like i think it was four men at the back trying to supply the ball to them when there's no one in the midfield trying to link the play um i think it's as simple as route one football you're trying to chip the ball to the striker's chest to use the phrase um but i do think they need to be coached better and that's where my questions over carlos quadrats credentials come in because he just seems a bit out of his depth at this moment and even last season um although the bfc did have injury problems um it seems to me like he's just a bit out of his depth um they either have to add a bit more quality to the indian contingent because with harmanjot kabra at the back you're not going to expect too much from him at this age um at the same time rahul bk has kind of dropped off the boil since his uh, great season 2 years ago but uh, yeah it's a bit of a difficult one um i think the next few games will really paint a good picture of where bfc truly stands in the table because we all think of them to be a consistent league side but so far it's not been so good I think coming into uh, round 4 or and round 5 in the coming week there are a few games that uh, we'd want to look forward to and I think Chennai in and Bangalore are a game uh, that uh, uh, that is a game to watch out for because it's a it's a recap of the of the final from 17 18 and then uh, you have the game against uh, northeast in east bengal and i think both the both the sides uh, northeast riding high on confidence in east bengal equally low on confidence i think they uh, kind of want to you know make the most of this match three points to either team is, is going to be very very important uh, and so is the game uh, against goa and kerala blasters i think that's that's one game where you see two teams with the same brand of football uh, meeting each other and two teams who uh, want to get some more points what do you think 
Yeah, when we look at the fixtures, it almost seems like one team has a lot to lose and one has a lot to gain. We talk about how um, in this bubble and without fans and everything that mindset is so important in the shortened or compressed season. And if BFC don't grind out a result and Chennai and win, then you can almost see two ends of the spectrum because Chennai would just kick on to another gear. Um, they've shown a good start to the season. Um, then you move on to Northeast East Bengal, which is a fascinating game. I think that has to be one of the most underrated picks of this week because uh, <laughs> there's so many stories surrounding the game. Um, I, I can't imagine Robbie Fowler can tell his players that they haven't been coached properly after that game, but a lot to be desired there in terms of that game. And just just looking through um, Northeast's approach to the games they've gone through this season, I don't think it's going to be easy, uh, easy for East Bengal. I think it's going to be quite difficult and probably arguably the most difficult test yet. Um, then you have the goa Kerala Blasters game, which is another tantalizing game because of the tactical battle. Uh, two Spanish coaches, two similar sides of play and a bit of edge because both these teams like to play on the front foot. So, uh, exciting game in prospect. Absolutely. I think there's a lot to look forward to even in the in the, in the next round. I think uh, uh, Mumbai City and Chennai and FC, again, a very good game. I think Hyderabad have been uh, exciting this season in the sense that they've kept two clean sheets. They look like a better team than, than the last season and they have some uh, good uh, football they've been playing uh, going forward. I think that's one more thing to look forward to because the teams uh, in the ISL, they kind of, except for ATK, who look uh, to be sitting very pretty at the top, all the other teams and Mumbai City. And I think all the other teams are kind of on the same level and that makes uh, for a very good uh, leagues and fixtures to be uh, to be coming up. Uh, it makes it more closer, no? It's, it's just a bit of uh, more competition than we expected because we expected teams like Hyderabad, Odisha, Northeast to be lingering at the bottom of the table. I really have to feel um, sorry. I really want to apologize because we predicted probably the worst possible outcome for these three teams. And um, just to see Hyderabad, I think first and foremost, the fact that they've had two clean sheets when they've had they had no clean sheets the whole of last season, massive improvement from them. They've just shown a bit of um, solidity in the back. They've shown some leadership. Um, uh, Chikil Sangha Singh was fantastic for them in that game against Bengaluru um, and less said about Hali Charan the better because I think without a bit of recklessness from his part when he got six shots and none of them went on target I think they could have snatched the three points in that game but I think for some of these clubs that are not filled with stars I think it's a good step because they've kind of settled into kind of a rhythm um, they know what their deficiencies are they know what their strengths are and they're trying to of course rely on the strengths and um, that's something that makes the season a bit more fascinating to me because uh, we expected before the season in our preview, we were talking about an established top four and the rest. And I don't think that's the case. Absolutely. And as football fans, that's that's something that's a welcome uh, welcome change and uh, wouldn't wouldn't mind being wrong about that. So I think with that, I think it's it's a good time to wrap up this particular weekly episode. Um, I think we've, we've actually gone on a bit more about some of the topics that that will continue to be a part of this ISL story this season. Um, referees are definitely under the spotlight and will be scrutinized more and more as the season goes on. And in terms of Indian coaches and Indian players, I think there's a lot more to come. I think Robbie Fowler's talking a bit prematurely. I think his, contact, uh, his comments need to be given a bit more time to be truly proven. But a lot of Indian players still haven't hit the heights that they've hit the last couple of years. So um, do stay tuned to the ISL. I think this week is a defining week for some of the clubs in the d near future, probably not the overall scheme of things, but um, a good week to look out for in terms of the football. Thank you, as uh, as always, Dibidi, for joining us on this one. And we hope to see you soon. So until next time, it's goodbye from us. Bye.